Good day, everyone, and uh, welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek Online. My name is Umbaglo, and with me once again is... Megalomaniac. Hello, Internet. Good day. So, last time we did the finale mission of the um, Iconian storyline. Uh, called Midnight. Yeah, called Midnight. And, boy, that was that was a pretty good mission, wasn't it? Yeah, very, very Star Trek-y uh, ending to that series. Yeah, so... so to follow on a mission called Midnight, we're going to do the new featured mission, which uh, came alongside the launch of Season 11, called Sunrise, which is a very appropriate name. Yep, we had a nap, you know, all rested. So, coffee. Yeah. So, is there Starbucks on Deep Space Nine? Probably. Uh, Starbucks, no, but I mean, you can certainly get something at Quark's. Yeah, they probably can put it in there because then they'd be like Battlestar Galactica and Fringe or something. They probably have an, like an actual Ractagino seller there somewhere, not just not just replicated stuff. Also, you know, technically Starbucks kind of... I don't know if it didn't exist when Deep Space Nine was produced, but it was definitely not as popular as it is. Yeah. All right, so now that we aren't actually in a war... We're going to go back to doing what the Federation does best, which is exploring. Which makes me wonder what the Klingon side is doing for this mission. Exploring. <laughs> New options of violence. Yeah. So the the crux of this mission is that we just, we noticed a star near Ferenginar became unstable, which is kind of a strange thing. So we're going to go see like what's going on. We first have to pick up specials to Deep Space Nine. Yeah. So we'll swing by Deep Space Nine and pick up our specialist. Uh, all we got to do is just enter the uh, the zone. We don't have to actually yeah. just beam up the specialist. I've just been hanging around Deep Space Nine for, for no reason. I'm to Nora Let's get started. Right. Yeah, and again, like the specialist is just on like solar phenomenon in general, so. A useful thing for us to have for this mission. Mm -hmm. And she is Cardassian. Yeah, which is an interesting touch. Damn dirty Cardassians. Oh, it, she was. She came to us from Deep Space Nine, so she's probably uh, a good person. Actually, I think all the bad Cardassians are dead now, anyway. Well, but we were not entirely sure because they redid the Cardassian series in this. So yeah. No so we're going to. Uh, we are going to go and show off those uh, missions later. Um, just we wanted to start off with the uh, the new mission because it's a new, new mission. The other ones are, I think, I think one or two of them is uh, one or two of the remade uh, Cardassian missions are in fact new in the same sense that like what they did with the Romulan missions, but and the and the the remade Borg missions, um, but. Broadly, yeah, from what I understand, like o Mayor O'Brien's evil kid and Re and Thomas Riker's kid, like don't exist anymore. Hmm. Something like that. I don't know. Uh, so I think that mission might have gotten just completely reworked. Yeah, so that's. I say this having not played them. Yeah, this is why I like <clears throat> these changes. Like, basically, when I started seeing Cryptic was wanting to go and like remaster a lot of their missions like that's why I started doing this series because I wanted to uh, document the th the things as they used to be so like I'm pretty glad that we managed to get the uh, the you know Cardassian series missions before they changed and the Borg series missions before they changed and the Romulan ones yeah. before, um, before they turned the game into a newbie pandering cakewalk like wow not I'm really. kidding um, I just I just like making that joke because I, I I see people complain that they removed WoW's complexity by which they removed a in my opinion fairly arcane talent system with something more simple. Yeah, it's, a lot of the people who complain about stuff like that are really like the kind of people who haven't really been making use of those systems anyway. Or let, let, let's just say they aren't they aren't the people who are actually being affected by the changes. Um, so there wasn't really much in the way of news for the past week. 
Um, no, because the news is season, season 11. So yep, season 11 came out. Uh, yes, man, season 11 is good. Which I haven't really, because I was busy with stuff. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of nice stuff that we are going to be showing off within the next uh, few mission, uh, next few videos. Um, which will hopefully let's just bring us right up to the next featured episode. Let's, let's just start it right away. Um, so yeah, it's there's there's some really nice stuff in season eleven. Um, and if we get some time alongside this, I, I one I want to talk about today is the Admiralty system. Um, but uh, we'll see if there's some some opportunities for slow time here, which there probably won't be. Maybe at maybe at the very end. Yet, so I have no idea what happens. <laughs> maybe at the very end, uh, you know, if this mission doesn't take overly long. All right, so well, that's a pretty star. Yeah, that it like the looks of this mission are actually pretty nice as well. So we'll just do some scanning stuff. And yeah, like this, this there's nothing about the sun which looks like it actually should be collapsing the way it is. It's just like it's it's just like it decided that it didn't want to do this anymore. So got tired after the whole Iconian War thing, so I take a few days off. Yeah. So let's. Oh, right. So let's. Uh, right, there we go. We got some particles. So let's go and uh, and pick them up, and so we can do some scans on them. Okay, I'll go this way because splitting up's a great idea. Yeah, actually, it should be fine. Uh, you will have to do one of the mini games to uh, to get the particles, but like, it kind of doesn't oh, matter. That's my favorite one. Yeah, this one's okay. I don't like this one. Yeah, I like honestly, this one is just the same as the dilithium mining. It just looks different. I don't like dilithium mining either. Yeah, fair enough. Alright, so the life cycle suddenly accelerated, but there's no real reason. So let's let's look at some stellar uh, material a little bit further out. Um, but yeah, uh, so with season eleven, they indeed launched a new lockbox with uh, some really nice looking ships inside of it. Like the two prize ships are uh, both. Um, cruiser carriers, which are ones I am, I really like, uh, but finding them is going to be real hard. So, oh well. Grind that e that uh, energy credits out. Just yeah. Them on the, uh, yeah. Exchange. Uh, like there's there's still one of the Voth ships that I need to get that way, and it it keeps coming and going. So there may have been another ship that came through here. Um, but yeah, uh, the so one of yeah one of the ships is absolutely like the you know the the big sort of like frontal like frontal um, bladed ship, which uh, it looks really really nice. Huh. Some foliage. Our favorites. And here we are in a nebula with no shields, but also means that they don't have any shields, so. And I have more guns. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was only a handful of mesh weavers, so. It actually is funny. Nice night. Uh, it's an interesting fighting Tholians again after, you know, spending. Yeah. The last basically year of game time fighting. Evolved dinosaurs and species A four seven two and all kinds of Delta Quadrant stuff. And it's the other interesting Itonians. thing about the yeah, the other interesting thing about the Tholians as an enemy is that um, even though they were also um, they were also quote unquote tricked by the Iconians, they still are also jerks anyway. So they would ha like they, basically they did that because that's what they would have done, not necessarily because they needed to be um, 
need to be tricked into it. Whereas, like, all the other races that we've had to fight were jerks only because the Iconians um, convinced them to... convinced them that we were being mean first. Oops. Alright, so... Is it, um... We... On one of these asteroids, I think it was, we discovered that there seemed to be some, uh... Um, like, preliminary, like, very rudimentary mining of the asteroids. Just weird. Which is kind of strange. Like, I uh, wonder who's... Also, check out that planet. Yeah, that's... And that moon. Yeah, so, basically, in this, in this solar system, it's almost all gas giants. Um... Is is what they was what they actually present. Uh, so we are need. To, so we're gonna go and scan around this gas giant and its moon. Huh, and there's there are people on one of these moons. So like, why didn't we see this before? And it's just and they basically just say like, yeah, that's mostly because um, like background chatter is so commonplace in the galaxy because of all the the pre-warp races that they're that all their systems are actually programmed to to block it as squelch like it is actually so common for for them to pick up bas basically the radio transmissions from pre-warp civilizations welcome to lucari uh so they are apparently like they're this race is I guess not so primitive like they were able to detect us and they do have some in system uh, space flight and so they apparently were able to find a way to communicate with us which well, like when this actually came up I thought that was kind of strange like I it for the rest of the mission it actually is something that they kind of had to do in order to make it all flow but I felt it was kind of interesting that they were just able to communicate with us, although I think it is actually explained. Because if you ask, hey, you had other visitors? Well, the Ferengi were here, so... Yeah, Ferengi don't have Prime Directive, and they probably saw people they, to exploit. And they probably sold them the communication equipment. So... At a tidy profit. Yeah. So that's actually probably exactly why they are able to talk to us. Yep, so we can, you know, we saw that we, you know, we were here because of the problems with their star. Um, and, you know, hey, we're here to help. And then we will help them uh, adjust the trajectory for the probe that they have, that, that they're trying to uh, fix the problem with it. If you say, like, hey, show me the plot, like, it's actually kind of an interesting effect they've got going here. Um, but like most puzzles in STO um, it's like not hard yeah like they basically tell you hey this is what it should be now just press the buttons until it's there right, so now we'll watch them launch the probe Right, so actually, this is going to be a few minutes to take care of. So while they're doing that, um, the Admiralty system. So I talked about this like a week or so ago, um, and what is it did turn out to be basically what I thought it was going to be. It was it's it is space duty officers, but it's actually it's kind of interesting. Um, so right now it the, the way it works is it's done in campaigns and there's only two campaigns in the game right now the uh, the Federation and the Klingons um, and when you oh, all right so the probe didn't work which I guess I mean that probably would have been too easy but yeah we're going to keep helping them and a stranger arrived uh, to uh, to give us a hand. This is suspicious. I don't trust him. Yeah. He's like, well, he's trying to use some logic on us. Because, yeah, if you 
Was You're it? not a Vulcan. <laughs> Vulcans, only Vulcans use logic. Of course, like, even if we prompt them to be like, yeah, like, we don't necessarily trust you, the people of the planet are like, you should probably still let him help. And we're like, well, yeah. And then, uh, and he's like, yeah, the inside of my ship is real weird, so I should just beam you guys. It's not a trap, we promise. He promised it's not a trap. It's totally a trap, isn't it? No. Well, you'll find out, but no. I'm Cal Dano. You... You moved me here without crossing the intervening space. You have some <laughs> teleportation technology. It's, again, like, this is just laying out that the people of this planet, like, in terms of the United Federation of Planets, they are kind, they are a little on the primitive side, but they are showing that they are not... They, they are, Stupid. Yeah, they know what they're doing. It's just that they haven't gotten around... Like, they haven't been able Wait. to finish. Oh my god, it's the Time Lord. Yeah! I was saying that to you earlier. This guy came from the future and has a ship which is bigger on the inside. It's like they wanted to use the Doctor, but couldn't. Yeah. There, there is actually... Even though... There, there, there is, is a, in fact, a Star Trek Doctor Who crossover comic, I guess. <laughs> the, it's funny, because I read... It's it's split into... The, like, the trade paperbacks are split into two volumes. I read the second one without realizing it. <laughs> the second one, because... It started off in the middle of things, but that's something Doctor Who does all the time, so I was just like, oh, okay, they're gonna go back and explain stuff further. Nope! <laughs> Yeah, so it's pretty cool though. So, you, so like the administrator mentions, like they they are able to travel a little bit, but they just have no they've had no need to. Everything they've needed has been just around their planet. So it's like meh. Yeah. It's like there's stuff in my fridge. I don't need to go out to the store yet. Yeah. And yeah, so while we're here, uh, we're we're starting first contact uh, proceedings. Just. Not all the diplomatic stuff. Even though I am a max rank diplomatic uh, captain. Yeah, but I'm here, so they're factoring that. Yeah, fair enough. So, yeah, so he's from the 31st century, which I, th hmm. I think that's actually the same time as our other time traveling friends. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think that's generally where the Enterprise gang showed up from too. He actually there is a later part where he does reference the temporal cold war. Correct. God, are they bring that plot back? Technically speaking, it's already been like every time we do in fact, 90% of the uh, the plot that involves the Tholians kind of involves the temporal cold war. Yeah, I know. No, no, I'm trying to prevent change. Yeah, so he he, he, here's where he actually lays out the, the big thing. Someone is temper, tampering with the timeline to destroy this star uh, for some weird reason. Yeah, so here's, here's basically another case where um, the, like, this is a STO puzzle, but it is not a puzzle because it tells you, like, yeah, it's like it, button and tell green. Yeah, so you. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. So, like, I, I get what they're going for, but it just makes the whole thing seem... I, I don't know. On the other hand, it's not that minigame. Yeah. So, here's here our science guy will lay out, like, yeah, we actually should trust this fellow because he is a descendant of these people. So I guess killing them would kind of erase himself from history. That's right. So he's like, yeah. So like now, like absolutely, he is on the up and up. Yeah. And what kind of dick messes with time anyway? <laughs> no matter what the circumstances. Oh wait. Oh wait. Whoops. Sounds like 
whoever tried to destabilize the Lucari stars decided to come knocking. Oh. Uh, we've got, uh, we've got some borders. And Sotholians. Yeah, of course Sotholians are here when it comes to something dealing with time travel. Like, there's only been one, I guess two time travel plots in STO that have not involved Sotholians. Um, the entire Iconian War thing, and then... Well, yeah, the, the, the Iconian War stuff, Divinity and... one. Um, okay, three. Because there was also, um... City, and si Klingon, yeah, yeah, City on the Edge of Tomorrow uh, did not involve them, technically. But, like, the other... Has there really been four time travel plots in STO? Hmm. Because there was the anniversary mission is absolutely them messing around with time. Yeah. Uh. What's, Sorta. I want to say that I want to say there was something else. I want to say there was another one where they were messing that the Iconians were not the Iconians but the Tholians were messing around with time. Anyway, now we're we gotta push back the Iconians that are trying to Tholians. get to that yeah, Tholians, man. I know we're just used to wanting to kill Iconians. We've been dealing with them for so long. Or more specifically dealing with their their proxies for so long. But yeah, the Tholians want something from uh Caldano's ship. And uh whatever it is, we probably don't want the Tholians to get them. That'd not be Only good Tholians dead though. Mm, not really. Only good Tholian is dead though. No, not really. That may be a horrible person. No, I'd rather not. Alright, so this is also a time defense. Like, we actually don't have to destroy uh, destroy all these ships, we just need to hold out. Yeah, but it's fun if we do. Well yeah, I mean the more it you destroy, it's the more XP. And our our tactical guy is surprised at how much power is being output by the time ship, which, I mean, come on, this ship is from 600 years in the future. It mm -hmm. should be pretty impressive. It's further in the future from this game than, like, this game is from now. Yeah. In fact, yes, it is, because, yeah, this game is the... is 20, uh, 2400. This only, oh, quote, it's only, only 400 four. years in the future. Yeah. Uh, slightly less, but yeah, that's only about 400 years in the future. Um, 395. Probably. About that, yeah. Yeah, so his ship is much, much further ahead. So yes, of, of course they've managed to miniaturize that much into a ship of his scale. It's also the TARDIS. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I really do wonder if they went to the BBC and been like, hey, hey guys, can we use the doctor, please? <laughs> Maybe she's like, no. Yeah, so that that actually leaves the question of because the way the way Cryptic's license works for for STO is that it's all the stuff which is held under CBS. So it makes me left wondering. Um, oh, whoops! The Tholians are now attacking the planet, uh, so we better. Uh, we better go help them. It just makes me wonder, like, who held the license for that crossover? IDW. Yeah, but so so if it's IDW, they're using the, the Paramount stuff, aren't they? Uh, no, actually, that that comic was specifically the Next Generation. Ah, uh, like, oh right, yeah, circa, it would have been because IDW is like circa like season five or six, I think. Okay, 
Because IDW is ma- the majority of the Star Trek stuff that IDW does is specifically the the JJ Abrams. Um, I think they just might have the comic license to Star Trek period. Um, mm. Well, I, mean, I, I, I imagine they I imagine they do because yeah, it, it's it's probably just more a matter of they they have no reason to do anything else. Like I I have seen their other books like yeah. And I've seen... I mean, they've done some really weird crossovers, so... Yeah. I don't know if they even need license or permission to do crossovers if they have the license in general. Given how CBS is handling the license for STO, I think that... Yes. But, it, yeah. it, but again, it could be it could be a matter of, like, who they have... Like, I guess it could be a matter of how they got the license. Who, who they get the... Because... Who, who the comics license. Yeah, because, again, like... Yeah, IDW has the normal. Like, I, yes, IDW has license for like the CBS Star Trek stuff, but the there there may be something about that license, which is why they're not doing a lot of stuff with those uh, with those series. Like, why they've only done small stories it with Next Generation and just, Deep Space Nine. Because it might just be an interesting. Too. It could also be an interesting, but the JJ stuff is held under Paramount, not under CBS. So yeah. it, there, there would absolutely be a different license for that. All right, so Cal Dano is here saying, like, apparent this this whole thing could have been just to draw him and this Fox Uthat here just so that the Tholians could steal it. Which... Is that's that's a, that's a hell of a uh, of a time loop there. Whoops. So yeah, so here you go. Now, as I mentioned, uh, Caldano name drops the temporal cold war. So this is absolutely connected with that. So the I don't know what the talks with that actually is, but it's apparently something that's from. I guess it's from Enterprise. It is. It was. It was the kind of driving plot for the first two seasons, but no one really liked it, so they kind of quietly dropped it in the third before just very quickly wrapping it up in the fourth. <laughs> At the beginning of the fourth, I should say. Uh, just as a, as a, like, I didn't, I've barely seen Enterprise, I just know the way it ended involved uh, time-traveling space Nazis. Because <laughs> it ended in World War II. Hmm. Yeah, I. One of these days, I want to get around to watching Enterprise. Um, I just need to do it someday. I've, I've actually been seeing like the the Blu-ray set be relatively cheap on uh, Amazon recently, but like if I'm gonna buy that, I've also been seeing the Blu-ray box set of the remastered next generation being pretty cheap and I should get that more. Yeah. Um, it's also, I don't know if it's on Canadian Netflix, but it's on American Netflix. <coughs> I don't think it's on the Canadian Netflix. I think all Canada has is, uh, I think some, if not all of the movies and the non, uh, HD, uh, remaster of next generation. Mm. Anyway, so yeah, that was all of sunrise. Uh, that was like a really nice, just short little mission. Uh, yeah, to... little, like I said, a little breather. Alright, so, yeah, so uh, Quinn mentions uh, Jean Luc Picard having found the talks with that uh, on Ryza, which I, I don't remember that one at all. Oh, uh, I remember that episode. Okay. I, I don't. Um, so, also, like, like what. Uh, Cryptic normally does for featured missions. There is a u- unique uh, unique item. This time it's a quantum phase torpedo, which basically what it does it's a it's a normal quantum torpedo except when it connects it does an AOE blast, uh, which I guess does extra shield damage. And there will also be more items in the upcoming weeks. Uh, let's see. Uh, a console which gives bonus to phaser damage and improves improves shield drain. 
Uh, automatically removes auxiliary power disabled conditions after one second. Ooh, that's nice. And then after is uh, a quantum phase beam array, which does... Uh, it is a... Ooh. 2.5% chance to drain shields from the enemy to restore yours. Hmm. That's pretty nice. Yeah, so the Toxic we thought was originally from the episode Captain's Holiday, which was Season 3 TNG. Okay. Uh, it was the first one, the Vosh. Hmm. Um, yeah, basically it's just like... Picard finds it, there's dudes after it. Hijinks and Sue. <laughs> um, but apparently... Try to see if the, there was an actor for him, but apparently that guy we met, Cal, Caldono, yeah, uh, was name dropped in that episode. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Uh, though in that it said he was from the the twenty seventh century, not the thirty first. <laughs> well, maybe it's a relative. Yeah. Wikis. Handy. All right. So since we got some time and uh, we got uh, interrupted. I'll finish up my explanation of the Admiralty system. But yeah, like, as I was saying, the Admiralty system is basically... Um, yeah, it's, it's basically uh, duty officer missions for ships. And the rewards are significantly larger, but the reason for that is the number of missions that you'll be able to do will generally be smaller than... Um, uh, than you can do for duty officers. Um, yeah. Um, like, even me, like, I own a lot of ships in the game, and I only have 61. Uh, and, and, and the other thing it seems to be is, is after a mission, your ships are basically out of action for, like, a day. Yeah, like... Uh, come on. Oof. All of a sudden, my frame rate took a dive. Whoopsie. Um. Okay, there. Oof, there we go. All right. I need to make sure make sure that that uh, that handled fine. Um. Yeah. So, th uh, your ships have a basically a repair and refit uh, timing, uh, and which goes up as the um, the tier of that ship goes up. So, for example, my uh, original series light cruiser, which I got for owning the tier one uh, uh, constitution, um, has a thirty-minute uh, recovery time after after the mission completes. Um, you know, my tier two Sulaban cell ship has two hours. You know, tier three ships are four hours. Tier four ships are eight. Five is twelve, and tier six ships are eighteen hours. In addition, you can also, as rewards from the Admiralty system, get single-use ships, uh, which, because they're single-use, don't have a uh, refit maintenance time, because because they go away. Yeah, because they go away. Uh, from the looks of things, you will only. I mean, I don't know whether this is true or not, but in my own experience, you will only get if you get uh, like single use ships. The single use ships that you get will only be copies of ships that you already own. So you can't seem. It doesn't seem like you can get um, ships that you don't already have access to. I don't think that's true. I, 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 I want to say that that's not true either. But all the ships that I've well, gotten I, have only been ones that I've owned, which has been I got kind a of heavy S four carrier, which I don't. Have. You don't have an uh, an Armitage? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought that you owned an Armitage. Nope. Hmm. I mean, I know that I have a very large pool, but the only ones that I've gotten have been like kind of weird ones. Like I've gotten a, was it? Actually, no. I did get one that I didn't already own because I got one. One of my first uh, single-use ships was the um, uh, the. Z I think it was the, the Zindi Primate uh, Dreadnought Cruiser. Hmm. Which I guess I guess I used. Yeah, so... Which is where I kind of realized that the ships that you get are 
like they can be really wi- like really wild. Um, mm-hmm. It's not, you know, like you're not just going to constantly get um, uh, you know like normal Federation or Klingon ships. Like you can get even like you can even get lockbox prize ships as single use ships within the Admiralty system. Uh, so, and then uh, each ship has uh, three stats, which is a representation of their engineering, their tactical, and their science capability, plus a special ability. Um, and especially like the special abilities are actually like there's there's a decent spread on them. Like you know the the command battle cruisers. In fact, actually a lot of the triple ships have a bonus to one of their stats if you if you send them on a mission by themselves. Um, a destroyer like. You know, minus uh, a reduction of the maintenance per type of ship that's in there. Lots of like plus stats per other ship, which is in the group that's of a certain type. Uh, bonus to critical rating. Uh, I can show what that is uh, in a bit. Um, it's, uh, that that seems to be like the primary like the types of bonuses. Like maybe that. Some of the special ones, like some of the more special ones, uh, also will do, here you go. Uh, the uh, science destroyer. Uh, some of the missions you can send. Every mission you will do will have a, a special event uh, randomly assigned to it. So that there's basically two things which are randomly assigned when it, when you have a mission, which is both the mission itself, just like duty officers, and then there's the event. And the event can have. Um, can increase the requirement um, that you need to like the this the the attribute points so to speak that you need to meet to get like one hundred percent completion rate on that mission, um, and they can also give uh, rewards for for that. Like for example, this one here that I've got, uh, break pilot bro- break pirate blockade. The event is lucky vein, and if I and if I manage to successfully complete this one, it will give me a, a dilithium ore package. So if I look at my in progress ones, I can view the details. We can see how the how the system looks because I, actually I've used up all my slots, so I, I can't start a new one at the moment to show. Um, so each mission that you that you have, like you can send up to three ships on it. Uh, and the requirements the, the requirements are actually not a hard requirement all it is is saying like if you meet these levels then you get a 100% success chance uh, if you don't meet all those levels then your chance of success will just start going down um, basically in, in accordance with how much below if you beat the requirements all the excess gets converted into critical rating uh, plus if you have like any Bonuses that give that will uh, give you like extra critical rating for uh, certain things. Like for example, this one here, this this event increases the required tactical points. So normally, normally clean up there like minefield would have only required eighty tactical, but because of this event, I now needed ninety tactical or an extra ten. It also gives me a bonus to the critical rating. And if I clear it, I get fifty thousand uh, energy credits bonus in addition to the normal mission rewards. Um, so the the other thing uh, about the so as, as I had mentioned, the uh, the Admiralty system is broken into campaigns, and you level up the campaign from one to ten. Um, and what what the level primarily does is it. Uh, controls which missions you have access to um for the most part um like i'm not sure how much of an effect it has on the missions you have available but it does affect what's called the tour of duty missions and basically what the tour of duty missions are is that they're kind of right now actually the ones that are available in the both the federation and the klingon uh ones are really just kind of like generic it's basically just hey here's the tour of duty mission Make sure you complete it. Um, each campaign has a unique tour of, of duty, which is basically a series of ten missions. Although you don't actually seem to have to do t- all ten missions. It looks like if you manage to critical one of the tours, it counts as two missions instead of just one. Um, but if you manage to get to ten of ten, uh, it ha- it gives you a special reward. So for the Federation, it gives you two specialization points. 
and for the Klingons it gives you 30,000 dilithium ore, and then the bar resets. So you can continue doing missions for these campaigns to continue getting tours of duties and continue completing them and to, in order to continue getting those rewards. Um, each tour of duty mission itself is um, uh, takes 20 hours to complete, so at the fastest you can do them, if, like, if you're just constantly getting the tour of duty missions, is about 5 days. Mm-hmm. Um, so the rewards are actually fairly appropriate for how much time you need to put into it, but also, like, the rewards in general for completing these missions have been kind of a lot. Like, just by doing a few... I Well, I've started doing these earlier in the week, and I, like, I'm already halfway through the, the Federation. Um, and almost to halfway of the Klingon Empire, and that has allowed me to unlock most of the slots. Like, you only start with three. You get uh, the fourth... For getting one campaign to level two, you get the f- you get the fifth from getting two no to level it's one campaign to level three, two campaigns to level three, one campaign to level five, two campaigns to level five, and then one campaign to level ten. Um, the other reason. So, so yeah, so I, I've only, I only just like started it just earlier in the week and it's, and just by doing these missions, I've already gotten like two specialization points because some of these missions, once you complete them, if, let's look at my Simon Logs, like some of these missions, like you can get almost 20,000 XP just for completing them. So like you can get a lot by doing these, a lot more than you get for, than you would get from doing the duty officer missions. But the side rewards that you can get from doing the duty officer missions is a little bit more than you would get from doing these ones. But I think the main reason why these missions will earn you more in general is because, again, like I have 61 ships. Right now I have 35 of them that are completely unavailable to me. Like I, I cannot use most of these ships for like at least the next three hours. And I own a lot of ships in the game. Like, I, there are a yeah, lot of... Do. Yeah. And I'm sure that there are... And I know that there are people who own more ships than I, but, like, yeah. I have eight. Yeah, so, in order to get a ship... So, there, there are... So to be fair, all my old ones are, like, not here, not... Yeah, so, I mean, you present. can you can reclaim those ships temporarily, and it will add them to your, to your Admiralty system. I think that's actually what I did earlier in the week. I, I reclaimed all of my all of my bot ships, including all of my like tier one and tier two ships. Even though, like, if we look at the the points, they're kind of not really useful. But because because what you will get, like because what it will show up is basically a random assortment of missions that you have your that you have the level for. Sometimes, like maybe for this one here. It's better for me to send like two tier one ships and a tier three ship. Like, why should I spend like why should I send an eighteen hour long uh, maintenance ship on this when I could just send some of my tier one and tier three ships on it? Um, now, if I reclaim it, then dismiss it. Does it stay in the admiralty it system? It does. Which is why I which is why I have sixty one ships in my Admiralty roster, even though I do not have sixty one ship slots. Uh, which which also gone crazy buying slip ships yeah, slots. which also goes into like how um, you oh yeah, just, so I just got a critical success on this one mission, um, which goes into um, what was I going to say? What'd you win? Uh, just. A little bit of credits, a little bit of XP, and some more progression for the the Federation. So, in fact, I can take this opportunity to start up a new mission and and show that process. So, if I choose, yeah, let's choose this one. So, yeah, so you can choose up to three ships to go on it, and then you'll show like here's what the event is. If I complete this one successfully, I'll get 500 dilithium. So, let's just look through. I don't have a lot of ships available to me right now. 
So let's just you send three of my best. Do I even have? I don't even have anything which is heavy tactical, huh? It'll be fine. Hmm. They can handle themselves. Oh, no, that'll have to do. Um. So actually, there was something about that one that I wanted. Oh, um, in addition, um, okay, so the other thing about ships is, ge generally speaking, the tier of the ship uh, will have an effect on its points. The rarity of the ship seems to not really have any real effect, though, uh, which is good because the rarity of the ship, all of the rarity of the ship actually does is it represents the acquisition method of that ship. So for um I, not logically mind. Yeah, not logically. Uh for example, my original issue Odyssey Star Cruiser is a common rarity ship. But this is the I got this one for doing the anniversary mission that that you had you had to do the mission at that time to get this ship. Now, later on, yes, Cryptic went and added uh, the way to buy the ship with, sh with fleet credits, which is probably why it's considered common, but like that's weird. So generally speaking, and th but then the one that's super weird is the Suliban cell ship, which it, like, I don't know why it's only an uncommon ship when like this is one of the big random event prizes. Like This is a highly sought after ship that you could only you only could have gotten this ship by by winning the the random lottery on the R&D packs whenever cryptic does those so like i don't know how it's only uncommon that's really weird um rare two star rarity uh is generally for c store purchase ships um I believe like I don't have any on hand right now, but I believe that um, dilithium purchase ships are probably either uncommon or common. Um, rare, rare quality ships are for ships which are fleet grade, uh, which includes not only straight up fleet ships, but sea store ships which are of fleet grade themselves, like all the three pack ships. You know the my my Odyssey, the um, the Vestas, the Andorian escorts. Um, ultra rare or four star rarity is for event ships or for lockbox prizes, um, or lobby ships, which are kind of the same thing. So like my advanced obelisk carrier or my Mon Bosch battleship, which were both uh, lobby stores. Uh, my Rizian luxury cruiser, which was a event ship. Uh, my Dromias, which I. I don't remember if the Dromias was Lobby or whether it was Lockbox. Uh, the Bastion was a Lockbox ship. Now this, the the Jem'Hadar attack ship though is one that I kind of object to. I think the Jem'Hadar attack ship should be an epic ship because of how super rare it was. But it's only ultra rare, so whatever. Maybe the Tier 6 version is super is, uh, epic. No, I imagine the Tier 6 version is also only ultra rare. Um... But yeah, so that's basically how the, there are epic ships in the game, uh, and right now the only way you can get an epic uh, Admiralty system ship is by getting to max level in one of the campaigns, and they will. And by doing so, you will get an epic level ship, which is appropriate to that campaign. So I would not be surprised if getting level ten in the Federation gives you the M Enterprise. And getting max level in the uh, Klingon gives you the Bortas. That makes sense. I mean, it's probably going to be something different, but I I, I absolutely expect that's what's going to happen. Uh, so they, so because the Admiralty system is entirely separate, like, you will get an Admiralty system ship for all ships that you own, but because the Admiralty system ships are themselves separate, uh, this, this gives Cryptic the leeway to give you control of ships which are either like harder for them to to justify allowing a player to fly or like you shouldn't be flying them at all because there's someone else's ship 
So like, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if we start seeing like as rewards, like you getting Admiralty access to cannon ships. Like maybe someday you'll have the Defiant in here, or like maybe you'll have, maybe you will get the Enterprise, stuff like that. But also it allows or stuff like like shuttles. Yeah, or it'll like also stuff that's not like a yeah. Like this this will allow you combat. Ship. Yeah. This this will make it easier for them to give out things like so like the the transport ships like there's the Sulaban cell ship and there's the other transport ship uh, that is available and like right now like yeah they can make them available for people to fly but they 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 kind of have to have a reason for it and it's kind of hard to like Cryptic hasn't made many of those available because they can't really make a good reason for why people should use them other than just Mm -hmm. the RP for it. And even then, like, the RP for it kind of breaks down. So this system should allow them more leeway to allow you to have access to ships which you shouldn't necessarily be able to fly. Also, it should also make it easier for them to give away, like, non-canon ships without necessarily making them have to be like lockbox prizes like something like this should make it like again with some of these missions um in fact i think i've got one in progress oh nope it's already completed um some of the missions yeah some of the missions that you can do in the Admiralty system will actually reward Admiralty systems ships. And they're, the, they're those are the single use ones. And like the first one I got was the Zindi Primate uh, Dreadnought Cruiser. So they can absolutely give you ships which are not part of your faction as rewards. So it should be very easy for them to give out Admiralty system ships which you should not have access to flying. Like maybe they'll give you some. Uh, cooperative ships using this system. Who knows? They do. They yeah, know. they know. But yeah, um... So that's... I think that's mostly it for the Admiralty system. Uh, the other uh, the other thing is, the three missions that are here are the only ones you can choose from, but they'll also show you, like, here's what the, the two upcoming missions are. The missions are unique to you as opposed to unique to the area that you're in, like with duty officers. Um, so you can... S- s- what you see are what's available to you. Uh, as you get critical successes on some missions, you will uh, win these pass tokens. Uh, and you can use these pass tokens to, like, ah, I don't really feel like doing this mission. So you can just use the pass token and get rid of it. And it get and it will give you the next mission from the uh, the bottom. Or if you plan it, then you can also do it as well. Then then as you complete it, it will, it will pop up in here. Um, so that's pretty much what there is about the Admiralty system. It's yeah, the only other interesting thing I'm noticing is if you have a fleet version of a ship. And the normal version, you do get both. Yes, also, so I have, also the I have both the multi vector and the fleet advanced. Yep. Uh, I have escorts. like I've I've done that with my um, my uh, tier five um, my tier five battle cruiser. Yep. So I, I have both the regular sea store battle cruiser, the fleet battle cruiser, and then my tier six battle cruiser. Are all and I in imagine the, if I owned it, I, the, the tier six version of the multi vector. Yeah. Probably here too. Yeah. Uh, in addition, uh, mirror universe versions are also considered to be a separate uh, ship. So if you opened up the uh, the mirror universe boxes, which is the other thing, um, the system will only award you a copy of a ship if you have it if if it ever gets added into your ship inventory. Not if it's boxed up. Not if it's in the sea store. Uh, or like not if it's like in in an unclaimed estate. You have to actually claim it, open up the box, add it to your ship inventory in order for the system to give you the Admiralty system version. Uh, so like that's why when Cryptic goes and adds that uh, that dry dock system, I guess I'll finally open up all of the. Uh, mirror universe ships that I've got that I've just never really wanted to use 
claim the Admiralty version of it and then put them into put them all into dry dock. I might, might as well. Uh -huh. Uh it's like I'm never gonna use them on anyone else. So But I guess that's also gonna depend on how many of those admiral of uh, those dry dock uh slots I get when the system launches. Which uh didn't launch with season eleven, but it will launch soonish probably. So Probably. But yeah. Um that'll basically be it for us for this week, uh I believe. Um so I'd like to to thank everyone for watching and we'll see you all next time. Bye everybody. <laughs>